Hey everyone, I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today, and we're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. And our guests today are Jennifer Stemmler, she's chief digital and information officer at Advantis Health, and Bill Lakowski, vice president of strategic client services at HC Tech. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I appreciate you all joining us. Uh, I think we're having a great discussion about the the practical realities of a healthcare organization, especially when it comes to EHR and things like that. So uh, before we uh, dive into that topic, uh, Jennifer, want to tell us a little bit about yourself and Advantage Health? Happy to. Um, thank you, John, for having me. So I'm Jennifer Stemmler. I am responsible at Adventist Health for both um, the CIO role and then our digital strategy um, for the health system. Um, I've been with Adventist Health for just over 10 years. Um, We are a large integrated delivery system throughout um, all of California, Oregon, Hawaii, and parts of Washington. Um, We have just over 27 acute care sites, 300 ambulatory clinics, um, and post-acute space as well. Awesome. Great. And Bill, uh, tell us about yourself and HC Tech. Yeah, so I'm Vice President of uh, Strategic Client Services at HC Tech, and, and what that really means is I'm pretty involved in all aspects of the business, and part of that is my background. I've been with HC Tech only half a year now, but I, I'm a former healthcare CIO, so I spent all my career on the uh, the healthcare provider side, 30 plus years at a, at a couple, two, uh, two or three different organizations as a CIO, and I bring that perspective to uh, HC Tech. Uh, I did not business with HC Tech, but I was pleasantly surprised and impressed when I got to know them. And so uh, I, I, I do get to get engaged in all the aspects of what we're doing in our services across the portfolio. Great. I love the double CIO. I think we're going to learn a lot in this interview. So Jennifer, talk to us about what was the problem or, or the, the challenges that Adventist was facing that you knew needed to be addressed when you engage HC Tech? Sure. So our relationship with HC Tech um, started at the end of 2017. Um, That was at a time when I was responsible for um, our clinical application delivery for our health system. We had a a small footprint of Epic in our Portland market that dated back to 1999 um, in our ambulatory space, supporting about 50 clinics um, and about 150 physicians. The rest of our health system was Cerner centric. And so we obviously our investments and our resources and planning went into um, where our predominant spend occurred, which was in Cerner. Um, That did not negate the need to continue to support um, the Epic environment in Portland um, because that was going to be um, something that continued long-term as as an organization, Oregon's a very Epic dominated market. And we had just made a decision that that would remain. That predated our partnership with OHSU Health. And during that time, our application expense, uh, because we were in a very epic oriented market pre-pandemic, resources for epic application support were extremely hard to come by. And so we suffered with um, a very high attrition rates, um, high competitive wage market. And we um, really had just resorted to consulting Um, as a method of support, which for health systems with really small margins like Adventist Health for faith-based nonprofit, we serve the underserved communities. Um, We knew that we needed to do something different in order to properly support that market. So working with HC Tech initially, they were part of our consulting strategy. So they had helped us with some projects, some go-lives, et cetera, in very small, measurable ways. Um, The problem, though, that I challenged HC Tech with is we were looking at um, doing something more with them um, was, hey, could we build an application managed service for a live Epic environment um, and have the cost and quality look better on the other side than the Mm -hmm. service that we're providing today? Um, We put a proposal together probably in about 90 days. We had things fleshed out. Um, We ended up signing an agreement in 2018. And that agreement continued for multiple years, um, multiple renewals. And I think um, that challenge really was very um, easy for HC Tech to solve. I'll say easy because I'm on the client side. I didn't know the hard work (laughs) that went in behind it, Uh Um, but I felt like um, they were 
they were definitely able to to come to the table with a proposal at that point. Talk to us about that. Uh, you know, when you were looking for that solution, what were the key areas of success that you were looking for, and how did you measure that? Right, and, and you know, how, I mean, I guess you you kind of talked a little bit about some of the measurement that you're doing, but how, how did you measure it, and what were the results that you found? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, anyone that knows me knows I'm very metric and results oriented. Um, and I think HC Tech knew that going in that we had to have things um, not only written into the contract, but I always said, if I have to go back to the contract and pull those up, then we're doing something wrong. Mm. And um, I never did. And I think it's because we saw the value um, coming through in ways that were reported by our executives in our physician community and our quality staff at Portland who, you know, I'm at our corporate office. So being able to get that feedback was important to me and continued that relationship. Um, so the fundamental aspects that we were looking for in terms of measuring success were um, contract value for service. So looking at um, value of our investment and um, reducing spend in an area that we were overspending previously. Um, but do it in a way where we still had quality outcomes. And so those quality outcomes for us were measured in service delivery. Um, so normal ITSM stuff, you know, um, KPIs and SLAs that were built into the contract that we met on and reviewed monthly and quarterly. Um, but then also quality. So being able to manage a program um, for quality measure build in Portland market that's highly um, competitive in terms of measuring quality and value-based care. And then also project work. You know, we had growth initiatives come through and HC Tech's ability to not have Megan in the middle and micromanage their work, um, but still deliver on the value that the business was looking for um, came through. And so having a project service delivery and cost and value equation that worked, um, it wasn't perfect, but I think in the end, uh, the measures that we set out to achieve were the right metrics. Interesting. I love that you did a, a financial one, but also a quality one. Uh, that, that's really interesting to see you do that. Bill, Bill, looping you in here, what was HC Tech's perspective on on the Epic Application Management Project with Adventist? That's something that I've learned that we uh, that HC Tech does really well for a number of customers. And going back to uh, you know working with Jennifer in the past year. Um, I think we we brought a team that was qualified, experienced, and consistent. It was very uh, it was a, it was instead of uh, you know an organization looking and bringing in consultants and contractors and having coming and going. This was a consistent managed service where I believe that we were you know very much focused on achieving uh, you know support and projects and ongoing work for uh, for Adventus. But it, it had that consistency of, of this of a, a group that was there through this this duration. It sounds like you have some battle scars, Bill, from uh, past experiences where it wasn't consistent for you. Is that fair? Is that what you see sometimes in the market? Well, I can I can tell you when my my last uh, role as a CIO, I, I spent five years in the Northeast, and we uh, it was part of a, a merger of two health systems that came together to form a regional, and we implemented Epic across. And uh, quite frankly, I would have liked to have a company like um, HC Tech who could help with the day-to-day -day support and maintenance and predictability. But we were doing that ourselves and bringing that together and, and having to uh, hit the road running with that. And it took us a, a time to really get to that, where I would have loved to have the experience to come in and, and, and take on a good part of that right off. Interesting. Jennifer, any advice you'd give to other CIOs that may be looking at doing a, a similar solution or have a similar problem? Absolutely. I'm always willing to share with fellow um, leaders in this space because it's a challenge. It can be problematic if not done right. Um, and it can do really great things if done well. I think the advice that I would share is make sure it's not just contract-based. So you're not just looking for a contractual commitment that looks good, looks good on paper. Um, oftentimes my work with HC Tech has been built on much more um, than just contractual commitments. It's been built on a relationship. And I know Bill and I haven't got a chance to work together, but um, <clears throat> I've worked 
several years directly with HC Tech and their ability to have just a um, a leadership embodied relationship where we both want each other to be successful in order to have a you know a joint return in the end. Um, just on the values that we're achieving, the the things that we can roll out together and do together. Um, I quite honestly have not had that same experience with um, any other vendor of that size. And I think it's important. If you, again, I'll repeat what I said earlier. If you have to go back to a contract, then you've done something probably wrong. Um, you need to have really the, the foundational relationship and the operating principles that allow you to operate within the terms of an agreement without having to go back to that agreement and um, look for ways out or penalties or other things that we have to do from time to time with vendors. So I do think that, you know, that's the advice I would give. It's not just about price point, because honestly, that's where CIOs, that's where most of us go because we're managing a very tight budget. Um, but it needs to be more than just um, dollars and cents. It needs to be balanced with a relationship you can trust and also quality measures that you can see on the other side coming out of this. Yeah. Reminds me of a CIO I was talking to who said, was talking about a company that said they actually delivered on what they promised. And I was like, you know, he made it sound rare, which you kind of it just is. did there it's too, unfortunate. which is interesting. <laughs> Kind of it's the, true. The it's unfortunate. We all have our battle scars of things that have not gone as planned. Um, you want something that can survive you if you're not here. And mm -hmm. I think my team that works um, with me, there are several on me, my team that have carried on the relationship with HC Tech. I don't, I don't often deal with HC Tech on a day-to-day -day basis anymore, but my team does. And they would share the same sentiment um, that I'm sharing. Wow. Well, Jennifer, you also did a an epic go live with OHSU for you know, and with worked with HC Tech on the go live. So you know, I, I want to hear from for both both of you, Bill and Jennifer. Maybe you could start, Bill, for a project like an epic go live. What support and resources do you really need? Well, HC Tech does many of these, and they've been doing it for a number of years. So we have, uh, you know, we have a, a group of people that we typically work very much with, with a lot of these, but we have a methodology, a process, and, and a way of, of implementing these. But I think it has a lot to do with, you know, we do bring a, a good group, there's planning, and there's a methodology that, you know, we have experience in doing this, and we've, we've done it for many years. What would you add, Jennifer? What what was the key for you know a, an epic go live? What support did you need? What services were you looking for? Yeah, sure. So we um, we did contract with HC Tech um, during so our Portland campus, both the hospital and the and the clinics went live on an OHSU Community Connect instance. Um, so we migrated off of Cerner for the hospital and Epic Ambulatory, which was that 1999 instance I was managing. Um, so both of those were rolled into this conversion. It was pretty um, massive um, at a time when we were coming out of COVID with very small margin and room for error. And um, so the importance on um, the go live was really around um, maintaining productivity, service, and experience for our clinicians and our patients um, because we were already operating at such a tight margin. And so HC Tech coming in and being able to um, build a process for go live um, was something, honestly, I didn't have to go source feedback. We got it pretty regularly on the calls that I would join our daily um, executive huddles, um, as well as uh, the president of that entity in Portland um, for us and his staff. And so I think it showed HC Tech's ability in my mind to um, not only operate a go live team very well, but listen to past feedback and incorporate that into how they worked with us going forward. That what Bill said is absolutely um, true. Um, they've got a, a key leader there that has built a team um, under the way that they roll these out that I've been part of in the past. And they just, they, they run these things um, as if they do it every day and maybe they do, but it <laughs> made it look easy. And we had, we, we did have really good feedback that didn't come from it or me asking it came from others saying um, that they felt like the adoption coaches and at the elbow support really helped quite a bit. 
And how do you approach that communication? It's interesting. You have daily, uh, you know, meetings about that. Uh, did you, did they use their own tools? Do you use your, your tools? You know, how do you manage that communication between your team and, and these consultants and partner vendors? It's a good question. Um, and we've wrestled with that for years. Um, I will go back to one of our go lives at ride out um, in our Northern California market on Cerner several years ago, where I had HC tech do the same type of engagement with us. And it was very important to me that we own um, communication tools, process and voice. And they did not um, second guess that or say, well, we, we need our own tools. They, they probably did have their own tools that they managed independently. Um, but that process was connected to where we needed them to be inserted in, knowing that they were part of a very large effort um, and we wanted it to seem cohesive as if they were part of our team. Interesting. Yeah, I think that's a an interesting idea that they essentially are part of your team. Yeah. <laughs> when you think about the impact that uh, EHR Go Live has on an organization, uh, it ha probably has to be that mindset, I think. Absolutely, 100%. Bill, talk to us about it. What you know is is what Jennifer's kind of described here, being part of the team and incorporate, you know, incorporating the communication channels that are native to her team, et cetera. You know, is is this what's commonly happening with other customers, or or are there other ways that other customers are approaching it? Well, I think what we we're just talking about. You know, we when when we would approach a project like this, we really want to determine, you know, what is being asked, what would we use? We do have tools and we've, we've used some of our own in these go lives. But as, as you were talking about, these go lives have multiple parts and pieces. So it's not just the ATEs, but you have your command center, you have your analysts that are at, at the ready, you have, uh, you know, other folks within the, you know, the organization that's, that's part of this implementation. So you want to have a real consistency as to how you're communicating in real time and staying up to speed and making sure that, you know, we get right back to the request or the issue that may be going on. I would say that that is the approach that we'd want to take is to make sure that what is the broader strategy for this go live from a, a day to day, moment to moment part of the uh, uh, communication. Interesting. So Jennifer, talk to us about how did this project go? You know, how was the turnaround time? How did it align with, with, with your expectations? Uh, you know, I've, I've heard lots of, I think we've all heard lots of go live uh, stories, <laughs> good, bad, otherwise, uh, how, how did it go for you? Um, yeah, you're right. Um, John, I think I've had my share of uh, good, bad, and ugly uh, with go lives over the years and some have not gone as well. I think there were certainly pockets of the OHSU go live that I, I'm sure, you know, as we went through postmortem and several cycles of review, we would make changes to with the way we rolled out technical devices or the dress rehearsal or wh whatever that may be. I have not heard the at the elbow support come up as an improvement um, area to focus on. And I think that that likely has to do with um, we were able to make very quick changes. So going back to your question on turnaround, um, very responsive. Um, they kind of bring their team in to be part of our command center and having someone there where we can say, hey, that at the elbow resource isn't doing well in clinic A. Um, can we do something different? They have a plan to swap people around, move people, et cetera, and people sitting on the bench kind of waiting to go in. And I think that model has worked well for us. Um, and was exemplified as part of our OHSU Go Live. I think there's always room for improvement. There's always gonna be resources that don't um, work out well and we give HC Tech that feedback. I mean, none of these are gonna be perfect coming in, um, but I think you know overall we, we were pretty happy with our turnaround time when we would provide that support. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting point uh, that the vendor has to be open to that. <laughs> the yeah. fact that Sometimes it's personalities, sometimes it's uh, expertise, sometimes it's lots of things that just don't quite work out. So that's an interesting thing. You know, I have a bit of a theory that many of us, and maybe I'm just talking about the media in general, or, you know, we're kind of tired of EHR, 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 you know, like Epic, Cerner, et cetera, you know, but yet, you know, like 
such a vast majority of the impact on a healthcare organization is the EHR still. It, it impacts so much of the daily life of, of the end users. So I think this has been a really interesting discussion. Bill, any final thoughts on that, you know, on, on, you know, on the key to whether it's a go live or even, you know, we talked initially about kind of the Epic management in general, a- any uh, final thoughts about, you know, the importance of that and how to make sure it's being done effectively, even though many of us are, decades into <laughs> to the EHR now. Well, I think, especially on the application managed services area, that is an area to uh, to consider because, you know, there's a lot of challenge for both staffing, finding good staff, finding qualified staff, and we're, we're being pushed with, uh, with, with cost challenges, with margin challenges. And if you can have a, a part of your application group that's managing day-to-day ticket, you know, back-end maintenance, some of that work at a reasonable cost that you can, uh, you know, let a managed service provide a real quality service there. It gives you the ability to focus a little bit more on the strategic and the other aspects of your, your structure. We also bring like service desk and clinical service desk and other things that can help take off some of the demand that's hitting like your core analysts or your core builders and really help you uh, streamline and focus on your efficiencies as an IT organization. So that's an area to uh, to consider. Uh, and it's it's certainly something that, you know, would would be beneficial instead of bringing in, you know, consultants and, and that that temporary help that comes in. Yeah. Jennifer, anything you'd add? I mean, it's interesting you're the chief digital and the information officer. So I'm sure AI is hammering your door, the patient experience is hammering, but the HR still impacts uh, your organization in a big way. You know, how do you balance all of that? Um, it's a fair question that I don't know I've entirely cracked the code on because it changes every day. Mm. And I think my um, the way that we have approached this is um, almost, you know, comment that you made earlier. While EHR conversions, um, we think are a thing of the past, they still have um, quite a bit of value in driving um, either an integrated approach that allows us to really bend our cost curves and shift those investments to a digital um, capability or has the ability to include some digital capabilities as part of a clinical ops um, workflow. Mm -hmm. So we we are rethinking that um, as a health system. So my, you know, my um, day-to-day uh, job really is continuing to evaluate where we leverage our EHR um, to provide that, that core set of capabilities and needs of which, you know, one that I've spoke about several times being the consumer experience and a consumer forward approach to healthcare, because we know that doing things the way we did it pre-pandemic is not going to be the survivable approach um, heading into the future. And consumers require a self-service avenue um, that will also bend our cost curve on the operation side when done well. And the when done well starts with um, evaluating the right technology, but then understanding you've got people and process and operating models to ensure that that technology, even AI, is leveraged to its full capacity. Excellent. Jennifer, Bill, I appreciate you both taking time to share your insights and perspectives. Uh, I think we learned a lot about, uh, you know, some uh, really challenging things that every healthcare organization faces. So appreciate you doing that. And thanks everyone for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting applications. Thanks. All right. Thank you.